hello everyone if you downloaded the code from the github link below you would get a page like this if you run it and then you will get this kind of beautiful user interface and it has a few file over here these are the files okay now let's go through the file very quickly this is the first sign up file and actually this is the sign up file which is being called from here and this is the main file actually it is doing all this uh, UI over here but in this case I'm not going to go through them if you downloaded the code from the github link you will have the same code as mine okay and then I have this another text widget and it is also again the basic just for decoration this and that it's not very important though all right and I have this main API class over here class called API and which is empty we'll do it together so well, let's get started so the first thing is that once you run the code you'll have an interface like this and then we want to click on it and as we click on this we want to post our name email and password to the uh, database or to the server so that's what we want to do so this is the button where we will click and post this data okay and the related uh, gesture detector for this button is this place okay so from here once you click on the button we want to save the data to the server okay so how to do that so the first we'll call a function okay we'll call it register okay but of course right now this function doesn't exist so we'll go ahead and uh, write our function okay so we'll write it uh, say somewhere up here okay and this would be a private function as you can see that from the underscore that this is private in flutter okay so write register and right over here so once we click on the button we want to grab the value from the text field and uh, these are the text field over here and related text field has text editing controller these are the pass controller email controller and name controller so password controller read password i mean password signing in double times writing double times and email controller and name controller so these are the controller they will have this value once you try to submit the click button okay so what we could do we can directly go ahead and save this value okay so for name we'll write name and then we'll call name controller dot text so name controller might have many other uh, part but in our case we are just taking the um, text part okay not the other property okay and then we'll have email well we have this error because we need to wrap them around something so we'll wrap it around an array okay and we'll pass it pass the array to something else a little later so let's move it up okay now the error should be gone okay so now this is our data array now this data should hold all of this all this variable and the value so the value once again coming from name controller and the name controller over here has uh, the value okay so name controller is uh, right down there over here okay so once again because these are a text controller or text input controller so once you click on this button they'll have the value so don't worry about that just go ahead and uh, type coding with me all right and next uh, we want to actually submit the data to the server uh, but for doing that we need to create a uh, api okay well now the api will have uh, a request to the server and several response back so we'll put that response in rest variable or any kind of variable you want it doesn't matter and then we'll call a uh, api from our call api class okay and we'll call it post data and then we'll pass our data and we'll also pass an endpoint or in our case endpoint is register but of course this method doesn't exist in call api class okay so now it is asking you to import the library and in our case this is this one okay and we have an error because it still doesn't exist okay so it the method should be over here now let me tell you what's happening here so once i get the value from this uh, controllers and we put them here in these variables and then this variable data variable it, it it contains all these values and these values we are passing to this method and we are also passing an endpoint this endpoint is the router in the server actually so it depends what kind of framework or backend you use in my case i'm using laravel so in laravel there is an api port or api file so over there we'll have this endpoint okay now the first thing first is this so let's go ahead and define this method so that's what we want to do first okay all right so this is the class over here let's go ahead and do it 
So first we'll define our base variable, our base URL. In our case, my case, HTTP dot mark dot stack dot com and API. All right. And I think there should be one more slash. That is at least true for Laravel. It could be same for any other framework, though. The true. I mean, it should be the same true for any other framework. Okay, now in our in my case, I am using this is the domain over here. This is my actual domain that you can go ahead and visit it. And now, because I'm using Laravel, Laravel puts all its API in a special file that is called api.php. Okay, this is there, and within it, you should have all of your um uh, api call okay so that's this is our base url but now if you're on local host just do it http uh, slash uh, localhost.com or localhost and api so it depends how you configure your localhost but i'm doing it on actual server or actual domain so this is this should be more useful though but if you go ahead with localhost just change here to localhost okay and you should be good to go and now now speaking of the method what is our method post data this is the method and we saw early that our method takes two variables uh, or parameters one is data and the other one is register okay i mean we have two two arguments or parameters uh, so the first one is data we'll call it data and second one we can call it anyone so we'll call it api url and then we'll return or we'll have a parenthesis now we want to create here a http request okay all right so http post request that's what we would be doing all right now http post request it takes a few parameters okay now the first one is called uri and it has a function called parse and within parse we need to pass a URI or a URL okay so now for our case we need to define what is this actual URL so we'll call it full URL and we'll ad adjust with our base URL plus API URL okay now once again this API URL is the endpoint or the router and this is the base URL and which is true for Laravel okay and this is combined together is called um, uh, full URL. So actually in the real world, it would be like like this register, but API We don't really directly visit from browser most of the time. You don't do that. You you do it through Endpoint so in our case endpoint is register. We'll, we'll, we'll work on register a little later Okay, so this is the URI that we should pass over here. Okay, so we'll call full URI Okay, yeah, so this is the first parameter it takes and there is the body parameter and body parameter actually is very special. Uh, what it does is uh, it sends all this data, and then once the response gotten back from the server, it puts it to the body. So that's how it works. And later on, we'll see we'll, we're going to use this body parameter. And then it also has headers, and headers actually take a few parameters. So we'll put them in a function. So the function name is hat setters okay this one now of course this hat setters doesn't exist yet so we need to write it and it's pretty simple okay so let's go ahead and just uh, implement it hat setters okay and it takes uh, in a few few properties in our case we'll use content type and um, content type is application json this is one of the properties and the second property is uh, it's called accept type accept so it's, it's pretty much the same as application type so what do you do we'll write application json okay we're good to go and then we need to uh, put the semicolon over here okay so now once again this post data it takes the data from the caller over here and it also sends a uh, let's see unused local variable okay, we'll take care of that later so now anyway so it takes the uh, data which is the data is this one and then an endpoint endpoint is this one so now we come over here we pass three uh it takes three parameters uri body and headers so body saves the response back from the server okay so now that's what we have now we want to return this okay okay because we want to get the response back from the server so the server returns something 
and now in, in our case we need to wait sometimes to get everything done in the server so because we are doing a wait so with our function we need to add a sync okay now we should be good to go all right now let's go ahead and uh, fix this section let's okay the error because i'm missing one uh, bracket i mean the brackets i'm missing. uh now let's go ahead and check this endpoint what is happening in this endpoint over here so this endpoint goes to our server this is our server url and api right okay so this is where we need to find right now and let's go ahead and see our server so this is our laravel back end and uh, regarding this laravel backend i have a dedicated tutorial how to create this uh, efficient laravel backend you can check out the link below so and if you have further questions you can leave a comment below anyway so this is the endpoint actually this is the same endpoint as our endpoint this one which is this one okay register so register is the router over here now of course it calls uh, a method from a controller so in our case the method is also called register you can call it any method you want it doesn't matter and now it, where it is it is in user controller so let's go ahead and find in my case this is the controller by the way so this api file lives in routes a folder and which has a file in your laravel installation api and with an api you will just go ahead and write your uh, endpoint with the different kind of request in our case this is a post request okay now let's go ahead and see this um, router okay now this route sorry this uh, controller so in this controller we want to receive all this data that is given from uh, our flutter application so this data is these are all saved in these three variables or property in our case name email and password right so all we need to do go ahead and grab that but you know that in laravel uh, so you can pass a, a request variable so that's all uh, we have and a lot of time it's default in your model if you bind a model in my case the model is user model which is a data database table anyway so that would be different topic so you can go ahead and check out my another tutorial for this uh, uh, backend so let's go ahead and grab our user information so first we'll create a new instance of our model so which is user and then we'll go ahead and uh, save this uh, information for the field i have in my model so this is in my data table f name which is for family name so we'll now we'll get every information from the request so now request post we'll call it name so now this one is exactly the same as this so this name email and password so they should correspond here so to be quick i'll just copy paste the second field i have i would say is email and now here is email so this email is my database field this is the text editor field from where i have where i have saved the information and now over here it's um i would say password okay all right now this should be password as well and now this should you should wrap it around and the function is just called by in our case we want to encrypt the password so bc or by crypt or bcrypt i don't know how do they read that anyway so now once this is done so we'll save our information to the database so we'll call users save this is the function in laravel so just go ahead and call it and this is combined with the model actually if you have a model it has a default method which is called save and using save you can save information to the database table so now once the saving is successful it will return something in our case we are returning json response okay and we are returning json response and it will return them in an array uh, in our case we'll just return success uh, this is a flag and this would be equal to true and in, if it fails we'll also return a json response but in this case this would return false okay so instead of success we'll return instead of true we'll return false okay yeah so what's happening here these are database table on the model actually and this lives over here exactly this one so this is the model or database table and now it has this corresponding fields as you can see from here column so these are the different columns i have here but i'm just using f name email and password these three 
Anyway, so if it's successful, then it will save this data successfully in the back end or in our database. Otherwise, it will return false. If it's successful, it will return true. Let's go ahead and save it. Now, this is done. We are done with the back end part. Now, we'll go ahead and complete uh, our uh, front end service. Okay. So now, here, if once we click on the register or this function get called, it will get call it will call post method and then it will return a response okay so we'll, we have to deal with the response now so what is the response so now let's declare another variable we'll call it body and now we'll do json decode json decode and rest dot body okay so it's returning do remember that it's returning a body section over here this one so this is the uh, so we are getting that body and decoding it okay because from server when you communicate with server the data is encoded now we are decoding and once we decode and now we'll go back to the body variable over here and do remember that it returns a success flag from the server so if it returns success flag once again so this is the flag over here so it's returning whatever it is if it is true then we go ahead and do something okay and if it's true then it means that the data has successfully been posted to the server right so now we can show a message to the user that your data has successfully been posted to the server so now let's go ahead and do it so we want to go to a new page once the data has been submitted so we'll call navigator.push okay and now it takes a property the first one is context and then the second one could be a new route okay so we'll call it material page route and within it we also have a few options that we need to set so the first one is a builder it takes a context and context should return a function or a widget in our case so we're returning scaffold widget so within scaffold widget definitely we can have app save it and now what do we do we want to run our application actually so much for the coding so let's go ahead and run it and let's see if we can successfully save data in the database so first name say that's my name and let's go ahead and type a random so let's go ahead and uh, click on it and it looks like we have an error okay so over here looks like it says there's an error so it looks like the error is in our controller so let's go ahead and check the controller okay so there should not be a semicolon or it could be just a comma so let's save it and uh, run it one more time so let's see if we can get successful yes so that means it worked actually because right now it's empty here there is nothing what i could do we could do a text a child property and we'll call text widget and here we'll say success and now here we'll do style and a text style and we'll say font size say 30 okay so now let's save it and now of course it don't update it what we could do we could do uh oh before we go ahead one more time let's check our database over here so right now it's empty let's let me refresh it yes so it means this is the data ahmed and email this this one that's what i did just now so one more time let's go ahead and fix it not fix it try a different email address we'll say bb dot so random password it doesn't matter so now let's go ahead and save it yes it's a success right okay perfect so that means it's working and let's check our data and that's what we submitted so yeah hopefully we learned something from this the post request and everything and don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials and share it with your friends